Good afternoon. Um, my videos are temporarily delayed by a, uh, a couple of days because I've just recently returned from a uh, poker tournament and um, uh, I didn't get anywhere unfortunately but uh, nevertheless I'm back and I'm primed to do this uh, next video because it's follow-on from the last one about Boris Johnson. Um, I've decided to do several because since the time that uh, Johnson became Prime Minister uh, there was a question come in or been posed to me um, by someone in uh, the northwest of uh, uh, northeast of England about uh, whether we're going to leave uh, on the 31st of uh, whether we're going to leave the EU on the 31st of October and um, I've inspected the chart of that as an orrery chart to do with being a big question and it poses some very interesting things in terms of horary astrology, whether we should ask such questions about whether such questions are uh, um, valid or not and it poses some complications in the chart because uh, there are contradictions all over the place and I thought I might uh, try an analysis of that chart and publish it uh, here so that we can see the um, the difficulties of horror astrology which is the art of answering questions but also to again try and experiment in it it's not a case of being right or wrong so much as investigating the very basis of astrology to see what it has to say, whether it's valid or invalid. After 40 years in the uh, subject, uh, maybe a bit longer actually, um, I, I found that astrology is valid. It can sometimes be uh, a little vague, um, but it depends on your... Um, essentially on your connection imaginatively intuitively with the horoscope built on a lot of technique and a a lot of um, understanding of the symbols involved anyway that's basically my thesis from the outset of these videos so now we're going to look uh, so that's what i'm going to do in future videos but for now we're going to look at the announcement chart that boris uh, in other words the chart uh, of the announcement of boris johnson's um uh, leadership uh, success uh it was at 12 uh, 29 i know because i was listening to it and i noted the clock and i drew a chart for that moment so strictly speaking, it's not a it's not a uh, an orrery chart. Although generally, what we do in such charts of events or inaugurations or a kataki, as it's uh, uh, known, uh, kataki means an inception or a beginning, and it and it tells us about the patterning of the intelligences, the astrological intelligences surrounding that particular event. And whether the event chart itself is valid or what we call radical, can it be used as a radix? Can it be used as, as a chart to be relied upon? Because not all charts uh, can be. And this is where we need to look into uh, any event chart, the opening of a shop, the uh, ship uh, sailing at sea, uh, a wedding, a, uh, an interview, a court case, whatever it is. Um, and and sometimes the the uh, chart for that moment when something so c comes into being uh, can be explored uh, in terms of its radicality and radicality depends on signification. This has been the whole theme of these uh, talks so far, and uh, in fact, it was under the uh, suggestion of Frank Clifford, a good friend of mine in London, a very noted astrologer uh, and publisher in astrology, uh, a very good palmist and teacher as well, author of several books and, uh, on astrology to help us um, uh, actually find our own way in astrology, which is essentially what he's about. Sorry about that noise. I'm sure it will go soon. Okay. I have the window open, otherwise it's going to be too hot in here uh, as I record this on the Sunday. Uh, okay. Um, so Frank su suggested me um, quite a few months ago, before last year, uh, that I do some stuff on signification since he found my lectures on it and the importance I stress on it. He thought it might be a good idea. So signification is what planets and positions and placements in the chart become significant in relation to the question or the personality or the psychology of the person which will be a birth chart obviously and do is the chart valid is it significant now 
um, this used to be called proving to, and uh, I did a case of that uh, on the 1066 chart is uh, England is leaking, um, or London is leaking, I can't remember the name of it now, but we looked upon the 1066 chart, the uh, Battle of Hastings chart of the victory of William the Conqueror, and when he was in inaugurated as king, and uh, that becomes the, the, the chart of England. And there's the wind blowing up, telling us, yes, 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 indeed. So, um, uh, so in that chart, which is a, a video I did a, quite a while ago, we have some various provings of that chart uh, with transits and things to, to various placements, indicating that it is a valid or radix, a radical chart. So let me now have uh, try and uh, bring this up to so I can share the chart with you on um, on this on the screen. Here we go. Right, uh, I am up there, and I think we just take that down so we can. I hope that uh, you can all see that uh, and now um, showing the chart in front of me. It was on the 23rd of July 2019 at 12.29 in London that Boris Johnson was announced to be the leader of the Conservative Party. And um, then a couple of days later, he became the Prime Minister of England, uh, uh, sorry, the UK and England. And is it valid? Is it radical? Well, we must look on and we must see very interestingly enough that the ascending sign is the same sign as Boris's Johnson's natal chart. Yes, it's five degrees uh, off. Uh, Johnson has an 11 degree a Libra ascendant. And, but that, that's unusual in itself. So it says something about this announcement. The time of day that it was there was very similar to the time of day when Boris Johnson was born. So um, we also have here that the ruler of the ascendant, which gives us the event itself, is conjoining the 10th house cusp. And not only is it conjoining it, it's a few minutes off. And so what we get over the time it takes for the MC to move to an exact conjunction of this uh, Venus, we have about six minutes or so, it gets closer and closer and closer to exactness. And so the whole statement about Boris Johnson becoming leader lasted about, uh, I think, about four or five minutes. And then John was, Johnson's speech lasted about six minutes. So we have about 11 minutes, which will move this, uh, I think it's about four minutes a degree, which will move it onto an exact conjunction with this Venus. I find that timing uh, uh, very interesting indeed, and it shows a, a degree of accuracy with the symbolism of movement, and time and also the nature of the event because the 10th house as i explored in the other video is the house of honor and success it's the statement of one's being in the world and uh, often relates to one's career or vocation one's profession in many ways it's the destiny of the individual the destination and the sign on the on the mc is the same here as boris johnson's mc as well so here we have a chart saying this is about a, 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 an announcement, if you like, conjunction that Mercury, and it's, it's about achieving success in, the, in his aim. He becomes uh, and became in the next couple of days the Prime Minister of the, uh, of the United Kingdom. Now in this instance, Although we have a Mercury retrograde, which usually indicates a backward step, something like that, this gives, the, I'm reading into this, the idea that it is to do with a, a re-announcement or a reversal of the aims of the last government in power, uh, not uh, the, the last cabinet and so on. There have been lots of resignations, people have, and so, this Gemini uh, sun, lots of Gemini in Boris Johnson's chart, um, is, is starting to divide, make clear um, divisions between those people that want to remain as part of the conglomerate mass of the European Union with inevitable political union, monetary union, legal union, and the rest of it, which will come um, uh, afterwards, or whether we come out. And so 
this Mercury ruling the ninth house to do with foreign affairs, foreign governments, those things abroad, and is to do with agreements or conversations. You see Gemini is the sign of the voice, the sign of communication. It is the chief, it is, so not chief, but it's a, the air signs. It often represents speech and to do with communications and deals. And you can see that this Mercury is retrograde in Cancer and moving back uh, to that Venus. And so in this instance, I find this Mercury retrograde to be something of a bonus, something of a, um, a fortunate, a fortunate things, because he's now taken some of the other elements and started to dispose of them. So here we see an accurate chart saying, yes, I am valid. It, it describes the event through the symbolism, as I've tried to show. And um, in this sense, it becomes radical and this becomes significant. I also note, uh, very interesting, that just at that point, the sun, um, a few hours earlier, had just gone over into the sign of Leo, uh, which of course is uh, a fire sign. This uh, Mars is in Leo, it starts to move towards it. And we have here an announcement, a big announcement, uh, on that day, President Trump, who has Mars in Leo uh, on the ascendant, announced that Boris, of course, was the London Boris or something like that. Of course, President Trump always likes to refer to himself as the centre of everything. And that grand, uh, adizing, grandizing and uh, magnificence producing the great, the bigger, the better. It's a kind of circus. It's the biggest show on earth or he's the biggest show on earth. And there is this uh, trying to talk things up, trying to trying to be bigger. All the fire signs uh, seek a kind of grand mythologizing of themselves. And we've also we've seen here that uh, over recent uh, days that there is a lot of talking up. There's a lot of positivity as the sun moves into its own sign of Leo. And interestingly enough, lots of the papers were talking about Boris Johnson as when he was asked as a child what he wanted to become later on in life. And he said, king of the world. Leo is the sign of the king, so is the sun. The uh, sun is uh, a symbol of presidential or uh, power, uh, the king, the supreme leader, or whatever. And here it moves into the sign of Leo, and we get this bold, blonde-haired um, uh, uh, announcement in, in a positive, uh, future-looking like uh, uh, idea of greatness. That is one of the key words to Leo, is that it uh, seeks greatness in life. Um, and sometimes, however, that greatness can be confused with celebrity. So we have this self-mythologizing sun here, um, uh, uh, announcing itself as different. And what does it rule? We've looked in other horoscopes and other videos here that it rules the 11th house, which is the Houses of Parliament. Parliament, that place where the House of Commons, very 11th house, the common humanity, um, a, a group of people of significance. And so we have a new announcement, a new leader, not only of the House of Commons, but also of the government, which is here. Now, the moon could also be symbolized as the government ruling it over here. And you can see it's in the second deacon of uh, uh, Aries, a new positive statement of this moon. And the second deacon is a Leo deacon. Now, if we um, wanted to uh, look at this, examine this chart a little further in terms of its radicality and interest, um, we can see that Saturn here is at the 16th degree of Capricorn, 1613. It's retrograde, of course, um, but what this position is, we found it in the Brexit books, uh, be, become very important. It is actually the position of England's Mercury, so it, which is at 16 Capricorn, and uh, this means that Saturn is right on it. Somebody sees this control, of the national debate, if you like. So this Saturnian element is transiting right now, the, the um, Mercury and Capricorn on the uh, 1066 chart of England, and it's as if now there's been a definite kind of authority taking over and a definite statement.
So this announces something very boldly. It's in its own sign. It has a positive value in that sign, even though it's retrograde, and is stating things with a kind of force or a determination. Now, let's have a look here, uh, therefore. Oh, oh, one other final thing that I found absolutely fascinating about this announcement chart. If you remember Boris Johnson's chart, his son is at basically 28 degrees Gemini, 28 and, and Venus is something like 20, 20, that's it, 28, 45, and the sun is somewhere about 27, 49, something like that. I can't remember exactly, it's in, the, it's in the previous one. And we see the part of fortune is right on that degree, only within about 15 minutes of arc or 17 minutes of arc of the sun. And so this stroke of fortune in the ninth house to do again with foreign diplomacy, foreign discussions, foreign conversations, deals, opportunities, telephone calls, all of those uh, associations that we might find with Gemini and Mercury. So we can see here the part of fortune is in there, a conjoining at this very minute, at this very hour, just that section, because the Part of fortune is found by a connection between the ascendant and the dialogue of relationship, uh, the mathematical relationship between the moon and the sun. It's a complicated index of the soli lunar relationship, which I can't go into, but uh, Raja talks quite a lot about it. And it's interesting that it's not often talked about <laughs> the opposite point of the part of fortune. It's called the part of illumination. Um, that's a whole fascinating uh, 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 discussion about the parts in, in astrology and what they mean but nevertheless the part of fortune is well known as the part of fortunate substance in older astrology medieval and then um, prior to 18th uh, 18th century astrology william lilly it is the uh, it that can be taken as the substance the value not it's kind of like venusian in its quality uh, it's goods, it's the things that it values. Um, and Raja calls it the part of happiness and where happiness can be most fulfilled. And we can start to see it's in the ninth house of foreign relations and it's in Gemini conjunction, Boris Johnson's sun and Venus conjunction. And his Venus rules the, uh, the his ascendant, meaning the rule of the ascendant of the sun are of one nature and purpose. That his personality is rep his personality representation, the rule of the ascendant, conjoins his very essence, the central thing. And so I feel that Boris Johnson here has got a, a very good kind of announcement astrologically. These things accidentally or coincide with his own natal chart. And in general, this produces a positive result of some kind. But here we go uh, into the further detail and this is where the experiment gets to be fun we see here the moon not in a particularly great sign but nevertheless conjoining an angle and therefore gaining some dignity in its position it moves it, it, it according to the nature of it because it rules the 10th house which is the uh, after the announcement after he has come into office I like it in a cardinal sign, meaning the, the, movement, the mover of events, if you like. And it starts off extremely well. Because uh, how we calculate aspects, quite easy. You just look at the element, the air uh, from fire to fire, it's 120 degrees. So you can see that the moon is almost exactly trying to this Mars, but it moves onto it. And I'm taking this as about a degree a week. So what we have here is a lot of positive, strong announcements, um, some opposition, obviously, but nevertheless, that moon moves rather beautifully onto a, um, a trine of um, Mars here in the 10th house, a strong dominant position, Mars in a fire sign. And so there's some announcements, bold announcements, big things to come. Um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And taking as its course, the center of attention on Boris himself. I think he's, a, he's going to get a team around him to do all the detail, which he doesn't do very much himself. But then what do we move on? 
the moon eventually moves on in three degrees, two or three degrees, onto this Jupiter. Again, bold announcements, a very happy trine between these uh, three bodies, but the moon is the mover. So within about three or four weeks uh, of this, probably within three, we get all the positive signs about what this is going to do, what he is going to do in office. Because this Venus is certainly Boris Johnson, um, uh, at least in this chart, I think he represents it because he is the one that's announced, he's the one that's been successful. And in his own chart, his son is conjunction Venus. So we can safely see this as a, a pretty strong significator of a successful applicant for a, a, a position of importance. Successful applicant of a position of importance related to the 10th house. Now, so we have a lot of positive affirmations. Jupiter here rules the third. It's retrograde. So he's starting to go back on, on, on particular things of the past and to redraw them, to represent them in a different light or completely cancel them. He's already done a harsh, uh, very Mars, uh, very harsh uh, kind of cutting regime. Although there are some remainers in his cabinet, uh, most of them in the key positions have been brought to the fore and are going to be pretty ruthless, I would say. And it needs something in order to draw and cut clear lines from the past. So I don't mind this retrograde Jupiter here. The plans that were the plans of the future that were are now under review. They're taking a backward step and there's a dialogue about them. It rules the third house. So we can see here that he's going to make a lot of speeches. He's going to be doing a lot of traveling. There are um, and, um, international communications. Jupiter is internationalism, but it's the rule of third house. So we can start to see the chart taking a kind of clear, I believe, a, a clear uh, fortuitous role uh, a role to play in, in delineating some of the elements to stem from this announcement of Boris Johnson leading the Conservative Party and becoming Prime Minister. But then we get the problems. Soon after, after about three or four weeks, we run into Moon Square to Saturn. And you see, as you start to see the moon's aspects, this is a cardinal sign, this is a cardinal sign, it'll be on this uh, degree of 16, and it will be square this. Saturn represents a block, it represents uh, some people probably plotting behind the scenes, conjunction uh, Pluto here, god of the underworld, god of those things are plotting or to do with, the, uh, as I say, plotting schemes to bring down things. Um, this often represents the deep state or those forces behind the scenes which have power and control that we, we don't see, but often to do with corporations, Capricorn, to do with large banks, to do with money interests, and, uh, and so on. So this moon, is going to square this Saturn in, let's see, that's uh, uh, 12, 13, somewhere around four or five weeks. And uh, we're going to see some stoppages, some blocks, some attempt to put a wall in place uh, to prevent or to, once the big announcements, once the everything's, you know, there's been a bump in the Conservative Party um, uh, 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 members and people are going back to the Conservative Party from Brexit. A lot of people are saying, of course, that it's a lot of bluster and uh, his Ma uh, Boris Johnson's Mars in Gemini is bluster. And so we, I, I saw him his first time in the House of Commons. He was cutting and pointing and jabbing, and that's very Mars in Gemini. Gemini rules the hands, the thoughts, the speech, and th that Mars is very punctuated and he comes forward and his head moves as if he's in a kind of boxing match and he's ready to, to, to tackle the opposition. So we see a lot of uh, Johnson's Mars in Gemini coming through his mind, the way he says things, this gesticulation and this particular pointing, very similar to Tony Blair, although he learned to kind of modify it because 
his moves in um, Aquarius and so he had a, always a sense of how his public performance would play so whenever he made a point it would be kind of cutting but it's still that Mars and Gemini still making a point with the ideological situation already in mind and that's how the will of this man will come through but Johnson can't help himself uh, moving around making kind of points sudden things surges of emotion because his Mars is square Uranus we're coming back to this chart that's the first problem then after the square to saturn the moon moves further on to square venus which is going to be in some way a square a problem with uh, his position that he's already gained the initial enthusiasms are going to be challenged and then moon eventually goes on to square pluto and square to mercury so after the initial then, we have uh, quite a lot of um, uh, 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 problems here, a lot of obstacles being put in the way. We've yet to see who is representing this uh, Saturn, but you can see it rules the fourth house. The, this, so if this is the government, which often in mundane astrology, the 10th house rules, this must be the opposition. Whether the opposition are going to come out for a no confidence vote, I'm unsure at the moment. It depends over the next few days about um, about these blocks, about the uh, groups underneath which are, are, are plotting against his um, uh, and prime ministership plotting against his leadership so this undermining of the saturn there's some corruption going on things behind the scenes there's a lot of talking shops here saturn in the third uh, how are we going to do this how are we going to do that um but recently uh, boris johnson's father who used to be an MEP has come out for him, even though he had been Remain all his life. Obviously, it's a son supporting him. It's a father supporting his son. It was very nice to hear on the news this morning. So there is a brief rundown on the, um, uh, not so brief actually, uh, but a rundown, let me stop sharing that, of the announcement chart. Now, aside from what we can tell and what is actually going on in worldly events that we can attribute or see through the symbolism of this uh, chart, uh, the, 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 the whole point here is to do with signification and it's to do with helping well, the astrologers viewing this channel and to, to get a dialogue going to um, encourage you all to have a look at charts and to try and find within them and to use them practically in your own life. I've done charts of interviews like this, charts of announcements, uh, uh, charts of marriages, uh, businesses and so on over my career and uh, it, you can often get a real taste of uh, something that the chart is foretelling or showing it is a it is a kataki it is a an a, 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 a statement that something is uh, about to happen and it looks at the positions what the intelligences that come through astrology have to say about the matter so it's not so much prediction as more on looking at uh, or looking through this uh, speculum if you like of the astrological patterns in order to gain some guidance along the way so I hope to encourage you all to take up event charts and hopefully look at them in, in a new light in relation to your own life, both for practical and uh, uh, curious interest in this uh, fascinating world of astrology. Next up, we'll come to other charts, uh, more detailed. I'm going to do the orrery um, at some point uh, so that we can get into the minutiae of astrological technique and what it can and cannot do. Thank you.